Inflation, cost of living crisis. These are terms that we've probably all heard many times over the last couple of years. And when it comes to guitar, they kind of end up meaning the same thing. You have to pay more for your gear. We've seen prices raised from almost every brand, sometimes a couple of price raises over the last few years, and it's understandable why. Fuel prices go up, every aspect of a guitar cost goes up. The factory raises their prices, the brands have to raise their prices, you have to pay more. And we've kind of got used to that over the last few years. So when a brand lowers their price by a significant margin, it's definitely worth a look. The guitar I'm going to show you today is a premium one, no doubt about it, I'll show you the specs, but it still comes in less than the latest release from Epiphone. Right, let's open it. This is a Vola Oz TNC. I first got my chance to play one of these at NAMM and I did like it. It was just, it's hard to gauge a guitar when you're in a building with 50,000 other people who are all playing different songs in different tunings at the same time. Now this is the full disclosure section of the video. I want to be as transparent as possible with you. This guitar was sent to me for free. However, I don't get paid to make a video. However, in this case, and I need to be clear here, Vola have got this uh, discount code, a coupon code for viewers to use that gives you a discount. It's 5% off any Vola on their online shop. However, I do get uh, a cut of that. So just to be aware, if you use that, I benefit from it. 100% honest. Now, before we get into the restringing, let's run over the specs quickly. Premium instrument, premium specs. The guitar is a mahogany body and a very light one at that. It, it really does not weigh what you would expect. It seems to be a two-piece body, um, but I don't know if that's specifically spec-wise. This one happens to be two-piece. It's also got a very nice looking flame maple top. And this isn't a veneer, this is a top. You can see that by the edge of the guitar. And I really do like that they stained the edges blue as well. Normally you'll see brands that will just stain the top and not stain the sides and it'll be kind of like a faux binding. But I actually much prefer the the blue as the, the binding. It's got a one piece roasted maple neck and fretboard. The fretboard is not a separate piece of wood from the neck, it's all one piece and the truss rod is put in with this skunk stripe on the back of the neck. It's also got glow in the dark side dots. We've got the best type of headstock, which is a reverse headstock, and we've got locking goto tuners. And they're staggered tuners too. The heights differ to compensate for the string angle. And here's an interesting bit. I recently saw a review from Henning Pauly on this guitar where he had one complaint where the low E string would pop out of the nut because of the angle whenever he was doing an open string. But he said that, uh, that Vola were going to fix that with a string tree. And on this guitar, they have. There is a rolling string tree on the low E and A string, and that does fix the problem. We've got 22 stainless steel frets. The fretwork is very nice, but a little bit unusual that it's 22 frets. Most of the time on super strat style guitars like this, you would see 24. So it feels a little bit more classic inspired. Now I'm not gonna talk about the pickups just yet because that's actually quite a big part of this guitar. We'll, we'll get to that. But there is this aesthetic pickguard choice, this clear pickguard, and it's probably my favorite part of the guitar. It reminds me of a Ibanez Universe, like the original swirled ones that had the clear pickguards. I always liked that. I understand that that's a personal preference though. That's a stylistic choice. I particularly enjoy it, but, but you might not. Now let's talk about the negatives, and believe me when I say I have looked for them. 
but I haven't really found any. I mean, I found one, and it's not a huge thing. It's something that can be fixed ridiculously easily, and it's not even like a problem per se. It's just something that I'd rather not have, but it's something that shows up on pretty much any Strat style guitar, and that is spring noise in the back. This guitar does have spring noise, so I'm gonna get rid of it here in this video, and I'll show you how to do that, but just to give you a demonstration here. You can hear that it's kind of got a, a spring reverb tank in the back from the Trem Springs. That's common on pretty much every Strat you'll ever find, um, and there's an easy fix to that. That is the only negative I can come across on this guitar, which says a lot. So let's fix it. I'll show you how to do it, actually, because it's really easy. You just need a little bit of tissue paper. You can use foam or sponge or anything, really, that's soft. So all I do is I wrap a little bit of tissue paper up twist it, because it will expand after it's just twisted to get in, and you can even just use a screwdriver to just get the finishing touches. And now if we take a muted spring versus a unmuted spring, huge difference. So uh, very happy with that, and if that's the only negative that I can find, you're doing well. So let's talk about all the positives. I actually don't even need to cut the strings here, I can just unlock them. And we're going to be putting on some Daddario 10s and tuning it to D standard because Walker, the band I'm in, play in D standard and I want to use this guitar for some recording. The reason that I want to use it for some recording is because of the electronics on this guitar. Very interesting setup. So the pickups are what kind of sets this guitar apart more so than it's already premium specs. You've got a humbucker in the bridge, a single coil in the middle, and you've got a single coil sized humbucker in the neck. It's got a five-way switch, a volume knob and a tone knob, and then some extras. On a lot of modern guitars, you've got the coil tap, and this guitar is no different. You pull the tone knob and you've got coil taps, so you can split the humbucker in the neck or the bridge. Cool. But you've also got, on the volume knob, add in neck pickup. So, for example, if we're in the position that I am now, I'm splitting the bridge pickup, so I've got just the, the single coil of a bridge pickup, but I've pulled the volume knob, I'm adding in a single coil of the neck pickup. So that's a tone that you wouldn't normally get on just, just a five-way switch. <laughs> So you've got about 20 or so different switching options with those added extras combined. So the add neck pickup push-pull pot there, that's a little bit different, but there's something that's even more different about this guitar, and that's this little switch right here. What this does is when it's pressed in, it bypasses whatever the volume and tone knob are doing completely. So you could roll your volume knob down completely, you'd have no signal, but if you press this button, you would, you'd have your volume on 10. And this does have a very interesting use that I found. This guitar is rather bright. Uh, and I'm used to bright guitars. I play a lot of stainless steel fretted, bright sounding guitars. And that's naturally my preference because it's easier to take away brightness than add it. But you can do a little trick with this. You can roll the tone knob down just a little bit, maybe to, to 8.5, 9 maybe. And that'll still give you, you know, a nice, beefy rhythm tone, and you can even drop your volume down maybe to, maybe down to nine, just, just a hair. So that's your rhythm tone, that's your rhythm setting, and you're more than happy with that. When it comes to solo, you've got this switch that bypasses what you did to the volume and tone, it brings them back to 10 immediately. You can switch that on, and you've got your tone and volume back to 10 for your lead solo, switch it off back for your rhythm. <laughs> So let's talk price. What did these guitars used to retail for? Well, as far as I could see, they're around like 
2000 and above and that's fair enough because this guitar plays very well being honest i would compare it to uh kind of the same feel as as a sir which that that's that's a big thing like i don't do that lightly also uh with the electronics being the way they are it kind of gives me james tyler vibes but as i mentioned in the whole intro price drop one of the very few brands that i've seen actually like lower their prices in this current climate and uh they lowered it to i believe in like europe or ireland uh it's like 1600 in and around there and in america i think it's like 1400 dollars um so it was a significant price drop from from the 2000 and uh, that makes it a fair bit more uh, competitive. They did this by going direct. They don't have any dealers or distribution anymore, so you can get them cheaper. And these guitars are made in Japan, so it's only fair to compare them to other guitars that are made in Japan, because that way you can, you can say that the labour costs are somewhat similar. And it still comes in cheaper than any of the made in Japan guitars that I'm aware of. For example, the Ibanez AZ made in Japan, that would be somewhat similar, like Super Strat-ish vibe. Uh, that's still what, like four or five, six hundred, depending on where you go, more than this. Uh, the Made in Japan Jackson line, which actually don't compare spec-wise to this. They're, uh, they don't have like the, the solid flame top or anything like that. Uh, they're still more expensive by a few hundred. Um, you've got, oh, ESPs E2, which are just the, the standard Made in Japan guitars. Those are, those are more expensive by a couple thousand. So yes, I would call this pretty well priced, and I just I have to say, it's cool to see a brand lower its price in a time when no one else is. And uh, this does bring up a, a point of, of contention, maybe, a point of, of criticism, and I can understand where it's coming from. I, I saw it in a, in a comment uh, a little while ago about the price drop. And it was someone who had bought at the higher price, they weren't too pleased. And that is fair enough, like, I bought this GoPro for I can't remember, I bought it like a year ago. But I, I bought it for a price and then a week later they lowered the price. It's annoying because I paid more when I could have waited a week but I didn't know, you know, that sort of thing. I get it. But at the same time, I don't think we can criticise a company for lowering its price in a time when everybody is raising their prices. Like I bought that camera for a price that I was willing to pay for it. Just because it was cheaper to buy after the fact doesn't mean I wasn't happy with the purchase, you know? And then the only other argument is, uh, oh, but resale value doesn't, it goes down. If you're buying guitars to resell, uh, don't buy guitars. Because it is a terrible investment most of the time. Artist owned, probably not. Everything else, probably. I do have to say, I'm very impressed. I, I said it in the email to Vola, um, that, that I was really impressed with this. Because I don't think there's really anything that you could improve upon. Like, there's no real, this could be done better, realistically. You asked for more cash. A brief cat cameo, and now the guitar is covered in cat hair. Thank you to Ginger. But how do we conclude? Well, I suppose I could just list out some specs again uh, premium well fitted hard case made in japan mahogany body solid flame maple top roasted maple one piece neck with 22 stainless steel frets and glow in the dark inlays goto hardware both tuners and bridge and an advanced pickup switching system and it's still all cheaper than the latest release from epiphone and a whole host of its competition too this really has become a serious competitor with the new price point and that's just this guitar they lowered the prices across their entire range so there are guitars a lot cheaper than this so if you're interested there is the five percent off the already dropped price with the code kdh um so you know if you want but uh yeah that's the video i'm gonna enjoy playing this one thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye i just i think it's probably my shut up crow i understand that that Seriously? I understand that that's...